Hi students, welcome to lesson number 36, Theories of Social Change, Part A. The problem of explaining change was central to 19th century sociology. This concern was due to awareness of the radical social effects of industrialization in European societies and an appreciation of the fundamental gap between European industrial societies and so called primitive societies. Thus, change was interpreted as evolution. It is a universal movement from an indefinite unstable homogeneity to a definite stable heterogeneity. Later, change was understood as progress. Progress is any positive change or voluntary adaptation that makes it easier to live. Lastly, change is also seen as development which means a desirable form of social change in which the hidden potential is utilized. However, all these terms fell short of defining change as they were subjective and value loaded. Today, a consensual and an objective definition of social change is the difference between the current and previous condition of any selected aspect of social organization or structure. This implies that changes can be structural in the form of stable structural elements or cultural that is changes in values, folkways, mores or as Talcott Parsons noted structural change. The objectives of this lesson are explain the evolutionary and cyclical theory of social change, describe the functional theory of social change, elaborate conflict theory of social change and describe modernization theory of social change. Theories of social change. Theories of change especially those of 19th century can be divided into theories of evolution and theories of revolution. Evolutionary as proposed by Auguste Comte, Herbert Spencer and Emil Durkheim saw society progress from simple rural agrarian forms to more complex differentiated industrial urban ones. They targeted the basic stages of development such as military society and industrial society establishing a direct relationship of the progress of humankind with society's evolution and saw change as internally driven. Functionalism, especially Parsonian views to some extent depends on evolutionary theory to analyze change in that it regards change as the adaptation of social system to its environment through the processes of mental differentiation and structural complexity. The theories of revolution give primacy to class conflict as engine of change. For Marx, change is not an automatic consequence from the change in the economy that is mode of production. Class struggle as an active intervention of human beings is necessary. In cyclical theory, Oswald Spengler, Arnold Toynbee and Pitrim Sorokin saw change occur cyclically. The conflict theory which is synonymous with Karl Marx and other chief exponents are Ralph Darendorf and Louis Kozer. Interestingly, they differ from classical Marxism in three ways. Firstly, conflict need not always arise from economic forces. Secondly, not all conflicts are catastrophic, there is scope for institutionalization. Thirdly, conflict is pervasive in all societies. Structural, functional or functional theory states that change is consequence of structural strain and is gradual and incremental. 
recent theories of modernization explain the global process by which traditional societies achieve modernity. There is also a convergence and divergence theory of social change. Convergence theory sees all societies converge to a point irrespective of their historical backgrounds and social structures as industrialization requires certain characteristics to function effectively. Divergence theory speaks of the growing separation between the West and non-West cultures which are of considerable debate and interest. Let us now discuss about these theories beginning with evolutionary theory. Evolutionary theories. Evolutionary theories of social change are conglomeration of many but interrelated theories of change. The main notion of the evolutionary theory of change is that there is consistent direction of social change of all societies from the original to the final stage of development. The change is from a simple and primitive to the more complex and advanced state. Evolutionary theory also implies that evolutionary change will culminate at reaching the final stage of development. Evolutionary theorists consider change as progress and growth. The theory can be classified into two main categories. Firstly, classical evolutionary theories. Secondly, neo-evolutionary theories. Let us now discuss classical evolutionary theories. The 19th century anthropologists and sociologists have developed evolutionary theories. Although approaches differ among them, there is an underlying principle of convergence of ideas that evolutionary change takes place in a unilinear and similar direction. They largely draw an analogy of the progress of animal life from the simple unicelled organisms to the most complex animal, the human being. They believe that as societies evolve and grow, the functions of its members would also become more specialized just as the development of millions of body cells to perform specific functions within an interrelated system. The main proponents of the classical theories of evolution change include August Comte, Herbert Spencer. August Comte, a French scholar and founder of sociology, advocated that societies pass through three stages of growth. The first stage is the theological stage, which is dominated by the guidance and principles of spiritual wisdom. The second stage is metaphysical stage, a transitional stage where supernatural beliefs are replaced by abstract principles as socio-cultural guidelines. The third stage is the positive or scientific stage in which society is governed mainly by scientific laws. Herbert Spencer, British sociologist, inspired by Darwin's theories of organic evolution opined that human societies moved through a series of social evolutionary stages from smaller and simpler structures to larger and more complex structures. This theory was later known as social Darwinism. The idea of social evolution was well received and popular among the 19th century anthropological and sociological thinkers. Lewis Henry Morgan, American anthropologist, social theorist and contemporary of E. B. Tyler made great impact in America by contributing to the evolutionary schemes of thinking and research by engaging on the origin and development of family, marriage and kinship systems. He saw the development of human society in three broad stages based mainly on technological innovations that is savagery, 
barbarism and civilization. Let us now discuss neo-evolutionary theories. Evolutionary theories were revived in the 20th century by V. Gordon Child, Julian Stewart and Leslie White. Their formulations of evolutionary theories are characterized by careful scrutiny of evidence, systematic analysis and a very rigorous reasoning. To distinguish them from the classical evolutionary theorists, they have also been labeled as neo-evolutionists. Now let us discuss the cyclical theories of social change. Cyclical theories of social change focus on the rise and fall of civilizations attempting to discover and account for these patterns of growth and decay. Spengler, Toynbee and Sorokin can be regarded as the champions of this theory. Spengler presented the destiny of civilizations theory. Oswald Spengler, a German school teacher in his book The Decline of the West published in 1918 pointed out that the fate of civilizations was a matter of destiny. Each civilization is like a biological organism and has a similar life cycle that is birth, maturity, old age and death. After making a study of eight major civilizations including the West, he said that the modern Western society is in the last stage that is old age. He concluded that the Western societies were entering a period of decay as evidenced by wars, conflicts and social breakdown that heralded their doom. This theory is not completely accepted. His idea of destiny is hardly an adequate explanation of social change. His biological analogy is also too unrealistic and his work is too mystical and speculative. Arnold Toynbee presented theory of challenge and response. Arnold Toynbee, a British historian with enough sociological insight has offered a relatively promising theory of social change. His famous book, A Study of History published in 1946, a multi-volume work is based on inputs from 24 civilizations. The key concepts in Toynbee's theory are those of challenge and response. Every society faces challenges at first, challenges posed by the environment and later challenges from internal and external enemies. The nature of responses determines the society's fate. The achievements of a civilization consist of its successful responses to the challenges. If it cannot mount an effective response, it dies. He does not believe that all civilizations will inevitably decay. He has pointed out that history is a series of cycles of decay and growth, but each new civilization is able to learn from the mistakes and borrows from cultures of others. It is therefore possible for each new cycle to offer higher level of achievement. Toynbee's views are more optimistic than those of Spengler's for he does not believe that all civilizations will inevitably decay. It is therefore possible for each new cycle to offer higher levels of achievement. Still, he has not explained why some societies are able to offer effective responses to their challenges while others do not or why a society should overcome one challenge but become a victim of another. Pitrim A. Sorokin presented sensate and ideational culture theory of social change. The Russian-American sociologist Pitrim Sorokin in his book Social and Culture Dynamics published in 1938 has offered another explanation of social change. His work has had a more lasting impact on sociological thinking. 
instead of viewing civilizations into terms of development and decline, he proposed that they alternate or fluctuate between two cultural extremes, the sensate and the ideational. The sensate culture stresses those things which can be perceived directly by the senses. It is a practical, hedonistic, sensual and materialistic. On the other hand, ideational culture emphasizes those things which can be perceived only by the mind. It is abstract, religious, concerned with faith and ultimate truth. It is the opposite of the sensate culture. Both represent pure types of culture. Hence, no society ever fully conforms to either type. Without mentioning the causes, Sorokin says that as the culture of society develops towards one pure type, it is countered by the opposing cultural force. Cultural development is then reversed moving towards the opposite type of culture. In brief, too much emphasis on one type of culture leads to a reaction towards the other. Societies contain both these impulses in varying degrees and the tension between them creates long term instability. Between these types of courses, there lies a third type, idealistic culture. This is happy and a desirable blend of the other two, but no society ever seems to have achieved it as a stable condition. Sorokin's theory has been critiqued since his concepts of sensate and ideational are purely subjective. His theory is in a way speculative and descriptive. It does not provide an explanation as to why social change should take this form. Let us now discuss the functionalist or dynamic theories of social change. In the middle decades of the 20th century, a number of American sociologists shifted their attention from social dynamics to social static or from social change to social stability. Talcott Parsons, American sociologist, stress the importance of cultural patterns in controlling the stability of a society. According to him, society has the ability to absorb the disruptive forces while maintaining overall stability. Change is not as something that disturbs the social equilibrium but as something that alters the state of equilibrium so that qualitatively new equilibrium results. He has stated that change may arise from two sources. They may come from outside the society through contact with other societies. Secondly, they may also come from inside the society through adjustment that must be made to resolve strains within the system. Parsons speaks of two processes that are at work in social change. In simple societies, institutions are undifferentiated that is, single institution serves many functions. The family performs reproductive, educational, socializing, economic, recreational and other functions. A process of differentiation takes place when the society becomes more and more complex. Different institutions such as school, factory may take over some of the functions of a family. The new institutions must be linked together in a proper way by the process of integration. New norms must be established in order to govern the relationship between the school and the home. Further, bridging institutions such as law, courts must resolve conflicts between other components in the system. Emile Durkheim was concerned with the question of how societies maintain internal stability and survive over time. He sought to explain social stability through the concept of solidarity and 
differentiated between the mechanical solidarity of primitive societies and the organic solidarity of complex modern societies. According to Durkheim, more primitive or traditional societies were held together by mechanical solidarity, which meant members of society lived in relatively small and undifferentiated groups where they shared strong family ties and performed similar daily tasks. Such societies were held together by shared values and common symbols. These societies have people involved in similar roles, so division of labor is simple. Therefore, a similar lifestyle is lived with common shared norms and values and beliefs. They have a consensus of opinion on moral issues, giving society a social solidarity to guide behavior. As there is a societal agreement, there is pressure to follow the value consensus. So, therefore, most do. Industrialization led to population growth and rapidly with urbanization occurring. As society develops, a division of labor occurs. This is when work becomes separate from home and the state organizes the education, health care and criminal justice systems. In modern societies, traditional family bonds are weaker. Modern societies also exhibit a complex division of labor where members perform very differently daily tasks. Durkheim argued that modern industrial society would destroy the traditional mechanical solidarity that held primitive societies together. Modern societies, however, do not fall apart. Instead, modern societies rely on organic solidarity, which means because of the extensive division of labor, members of society are forced to interact and exchange with one another to provide the things they need. Society consists of interdependent parts, each of which helps to maintain the stability of the entire social system which has a tendency to seek equilibrium and balance. Imbalances mean system has to adjust to new equilibrium. Social change is means to get from one state of social stability to another. Traditional societies move from traditional values, kin ties to industrialization with weakened kin ties and individualism. Evolutionary theory as proposed by August Comte, Herbert Spencer and Emile Durkheim saw society progress from simple rural agrarian forms to more complex differentiated industrial urban ones. The cyclical theories of social change focus on the rise and fall of civilizations attempting to discover and account for these patterns of growth and decay. Spengler, Toynbee and Sorokin can be regarded as the champions of this theory.